Hello. Hello, hello. Good morning. Good morning. This is working. You're muted. I'm muted? Uh, yeah, now you're not. I wasn't before. That wasn't me talking. I know you see my jaw moving, but that was me chewing gum. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, I hope you guys are pulling up the lesson. Pardon, uh, what lesson are we on again? We are finishing up 12-7. And then we'll do twelve eight. Uh, how 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 are we almost done with twelve seven? Yeah, we're at the very end of it. Uh, I hope we don't have to read homework assignments. Uh, I don't think so. And I think all the homework I'm going to start doing every fourth problem for the lo very long sets. I'm fine with every fourth problem. If you guys want to do every even to get more practice. I think that's a great idea, but I'm only gonna, I, I think you guys only need to do every fourth problem when there's like 60 plus problems. Yeah, there's too many. Like, but it's only, it, since it's evens, it, 60 plus is really 30 problems. Yeah, but like usually we have like 20 problems. That's true, so 10 more problems is not terrible, terrible, but. It's still more work. But every fourth problem is more like 15 problems. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I and mean, that's not bad. A lot of the times we do have 15 problems when you give us homework regularly, but um, before coronavirus. Yeah. Oh, before coronavirus. That's, yeah, that's what Joseph was saying. for more participants here. So what are we doing? Uh, I'm just kind of monitoring the, the waiting room right now. I'm just trying to look and see who's coming in. Okay, I'm going to just put up your screen now. Uh, share screen. There you guys go. You can start on that one. Try to remember what to do, but try to try to do this problem in the context of the section we're in, which is completing the square. Try to do it in that context. Take about another minute and then we will go over it.
Okay, a little bit more time. Okay, hopefully you've seen the problem. Don't forget about the announcements for textbook return. Yes, okay, I put, let's see how many participants we have. We're still building some participants, but I guess I can, maybe you guys can remind me later. Um, I put in your updates and in an announcement that Monday there won't be a Zoom meeting because of Memorial Day, and then June 3rd and 4th are textbook and locker, you know, whatever that day is. It, uh, the fourth is the high school and you don't have high school classes, right? So. No, it doesn't matter because I'm helping at the campus. Oh. From 7.30 in the morning till two in the afternoon. I am unavailable. So three days, I put it in the updates, check it out. Those days we are not meeting, but after we are and before we are and in between, okay? Oh. All right, so now let me do stop share. Okay, let's take a look at this. So the ball is hit. Immediately, I want to start taking important, I want to start talk, pardon me, I want to start talking about important points, points of interest. Immediately, what point of interest can you see from this? Immediately, what point of interest do you see? Negative three over two. Negative what? Uh, uh, the, uh, the first term is perfect. Without calculation, what do you see? The first term is a perfect square. They're all divisible by three. The first term being a perfect square mm. is not a point of interest. It's a, it's something that you're noticing about it. Where if it being all divisible by three. It's that's not. True. But I'm saying a point of interest would be a Y intercept, an X intercept, a vertex. Y intercept is three. Ah. Okay, what does that mean, that the, there's a three there? That means that it was thrown from a height of three. Was it thrown or was it hit? Hit, I guess. Okay, so that three means something. That's how high off the ground the ball was when it was hit. So as the ball came across the plate, it was three feet above the ground when it got hit, not at zero. That is a point of interest. You have a point that you could actually graph if you were trying to graph it, okay? So remember, what you want to come out of this chapter as a whole is points of interest and being able to apply them to solve different types of problems, okay? You get so many different types of problems, and hopefully, you're going to get problems you've never seen before. Those are the more fun ones. And then you, then you see, do you really know enough? And if you don't, that's fine. Then you can go back and learn more, all right? But right now, you should have the tools to do this problem. All right, so we want to know the vertex. What we were studying yesterday is how do we get the vertex by completing the square? Don't make this zero. You're not looking for the roots. You're looking for the vertex. So what we're going to do is to complete the square, how are you going to do this? What are you going to do? I think you subtract three. That's if it's zero and you're completing the square. This is we're trying to write this in vertex form. How would you do that? Maybe something like that. Or is that what you would do? What would you do? Or, or, no, not that. Because you don't want to divide on both sides. You want to do everything on the right-hand side. So you're not going to use any properties of equality where you're doing it on both sides. So maybe I just want to factor out a 16 here, a negative 16. Doesn't 16 go into 96? It does six times. So watch this. If I pull this out, and then I have the plus three there. Oh, wow. Wait, can you also factor out a T? I don't want to. I want to make a perfect square trinomial here. I want to complete the square in there. Okay. So let me even give myself more room. 
So plus um, nine. All right, so wait, let me just let everybody catch up to this and understand what they're looking at here. That's an old habit of mine, by the way, you could see that, that I didn't copy down what was there. That shows up, that old habit shows up. You wanna get rid of it now. Copy everything down from line to line. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, six cut in half is three. Three squared is nine that you're gonna be adding. But you're not gonna add it to the other side. You would need to subtract it here. However, that is not gonna have a value of nine. Why not? Because you have plus three. Because you also have the plus three. You have the negative 16. No. Mom, negative negative six. The actual value will be negative 16 times nine. Before so negative I had that zero there, when I didn't have anything there, negative 16 times zero, there was no value there. By me putting a nine, then to the equation, I'm actually adding negative 16 times nine of value to the problem. Okay? You have to subtract negative Okay, so if that, by me putting a nine there, I'm going to get negative 16 times 9, which is what? 90 and 54, 144. It's going to be worth a negative 144 to the right side of the equation. I need to stop there and let people ask questions about what I'm saying if you're not understanding. Are you trying to balance it out once you factored it? I'm trying to balance it out without doing the same thing on both sides of the equation. I want to balance it all on the right side. So if you look at what's happening, the actual value that you're creating by making a perfect square with a nine, you're actually getting a value of negative 144 that you need to then, that's going to mean that the left side of your equation just dropped by negative 144. Okay, so the way that I'm gonna account for that is I'm going to add 144 here. That 144 added, and then the negative 144 I get here would then cancel out into zero, and it would get me back to where I started. Wait, why do you need to add it outside the parentheses? What happens if you multiply this all back now? You get negative 16 t squared. You get positive. 96 t you get negative 144 plus the 144 plus the three these cancel and what do you have what you started with but then what's the point if i have the 144 inside then this negative 16 will multiply to the 144 i need it outside so this does not get multiplied by the negative 16. Okay, but what's mm -hmm. one? No, I think. To the first well, if you want to know why I'm doing it, you're going to see in the next step. But just so far, what I did, if you understand what I did, you don't need to understand why I'm doing it yet. Okay. Okay. So, but, okay. So we can go back Eight. to. Somebody's going to oh, ask you how I did, why I did that. But here we go. Let's go to the next step. Y equals negative 16. Now, this is a perfect square trinomial by construction. So this is factors into t minus whatever half of that was squared plus whatever this becomes, 147. How'd you get 144? Like, how'd you add 144? Negative 16 times 9 is negative 144. Okay. Before I had that 9 there, that negative 16 would have multiplied to nothing right here. So by me putting a 9, I'm not adding 9 to the value of the whole right side. I'm actually adding negative 144 to the right-hand side. Wait, okay. can you, like, rewrite what you did? Because, like, I didn't really get it. what you did. Okay. Just, you understand how I got the nine? Like yeah, I, I do. I completed the square inside the parentheses here. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Then when you multiply it out, that would be negative 144. So he also yeah, had to add that. 144 to cancel but, it out. But Joseph, watch this. If oh. I 10 equals 10, and I just added some value here, if I added 5. Oh, I never mind. I get what you mean. Then you have to account for that on the other side. Or I can account for it by subtracting 5 right away. And I don't have to do anything to the left-hand side. Right? If I subtract 5, then I can account for that by also adding 5. Well, by me adding nine, but because it's being multiplied on the outside by negative 16, I am subtracting 144. So I have to account for that by adding 144. Mr. Uh, Rosenthal, mm -hmm. would it not be, it's not only, well, surprisingly, it's not only it's simpler to explain, but also faster to use if you just use derivatives instead of yeah, completing the square for the simple purpose. In algebra two, when we're learning the algebra two. You will. But this is much more complicated. Okay. Well, we can look at the calculus. So you want to take the derivative, right? Which is the slope at the at the maximum or minimum point. And yes. So in the, in the, at the maximum point, the, the derivative is not the slope at the maximum point. The derivative is the slope tangent to the line at any point along the curve. Okay. But at the maximum point, the slope turns into zero. So you can take the derivative and get negative 32t plus 96 is equal to zero, and then just solve that. So you get positive 32t is equal to 96, t is equal to three, which is what you have here. Three is what makes that zero, okay? Then you plug it in, and you wouldn't have gotten the purple, okay? You would have plugged it back into black, okay? When you plug it into black, t is three, you get nine times negative 16 is negative 144, plus 96 times three, which is probably 288. And then 288 minus 144 is 144, plus three is 147, okay? So you can do it with the derivative, yes. If you, you, want, did, if you, you could have just done understand that, that's fine, but I need you to understand both ways. So three, just, uh, being three means that it um it took three seconds for the um baseball to get at its maximum height. And what right? was the maximum height? You can plug it. You what you said. No, you already have it sitting right there. The oh, okay. One forty-seven. H, H is three. That's the x coordinate of the vertex. K is the one out here. One forty-seven. So this is the amount of seconds it took to get to your maximum height of 147. Ms. So, Rosen, how did you get to minus 32t plus 96? I took the derivative of, of this y with respect to the change in t. So the change in y is height. The change in height with respect to the change in time is zero at the maximum. Why? Why is your height changing by zero over time at the maximum point? Because the slope, it, the derivative is now zero. The ball is rising. When it reaches its maximum point, at that instantaneous moment in it time, stops. it stops before it starts to go back down. So at that moment, the, the height of the ball is not changing at that time. It's the limit. Yes. Zero. So by, by me saying the, the, the change in y with respect to the change in x is a slope that's zero, and then we do the derivative. And the derivative power rule says the exponent gets multiplied to the coefficient. I proved it during office hours, I believe, a few days ago. I don't remember when I did it. Yes. You multiply the exponent to the coefficient, and you drop one off the exponent, which is what, how I got this. This is t to the 1, I multiply it to the 96, and then I drop that to t to the 0, which is just 1, so it's gone. So it's just 96. This is t to the 0, so the 0 gets multiplied to the 3, which means all constants, when you take the derivative, are gone. But see, now the conversation is getting into the, the derivative, and I don't want that right now. Wait, but how do we do that? Hours. If you want to do this with calculus, come during office hours. Okay, right how now we need to know how to do it both ways. So let's focus now on how do I complete the square and account for that. That's how we're doing this. Well, we could have just done is negative b over 2a and plugged in. That's another way to do it. So if you do you get negative, negative 144 on. plus 288 plus. David's right. This is b. 
this is A. Negative this over two of those will give you three. Then you plug in the three and you get 147. So negative, negative over 2a to find the x coordinate works well. Negative b over 2a is the equivalent of using the quadratic formula instead of completing the square. So, Surin, you know how you said use calculus? Yes. Calculus gives you negative b over 2a. When you take the equation in standard form, like this, y equals. Send us you wants to use the yes, most complicated way. When you have this, and you take the derivative dy dx, that's... Oh, I know, Ms. Rosedale. That was an exercise on one of the homework, uh, on one of the homework yeah. assignments. It was a challenge so, problem. So just like completing the square in standard form gives you the quadratic formula, you don't, we don't complete the square anymore because we know that it leads to the quadratic formula. We just use the quadratic formula, okay? So same thing, to find the location of the vertex, we know that using the calculus is going to give us an x coordinate at negative b over 2a. You then plug it back in to see what it, you get at y, what the height is at that time. Okay? Um, so that is the shortcut. Instead of using the calculus, you're using the result of using calculus. Okay? But we're not doing it that way. You guys don't resist the new understanding of doing this. You are also learning a new balancing tool. Instead of using properties of equality, you're creating zero pairs so that you can manipulate your equation. If you, if you disregard that, these little points and nuances, then you might not have those tools later when you're trying to do maybe trig identities or you're trying to solve a problem. Okay, so you need to know how to do it all the ways. Okay, so let's ask questions. Let me erase the calculus. Please leave your message for eight one. No, that needs to go off. Okay, so what? how, so what's the next step after that if we were to do it algebraically, not by calculus? This is, you're done. So the vertex, which is the, you know, the balls hit and it goes up and it reaches its maximum point, that's the vertex. The vertex is at H, K. H is three, K is 147. The meaning of that is that three seconds, this is time, this is the height of the ball at its maximum height. It's 147 feet above the ground. Okay? Okay. So, um, negative 16 are T is, so in negative 16 T is the gravity and 96 T is the force going upwards? Yeah, the initial velocity is 96. Yes, the upwards velocity. Is 96 feet per second. Yeah. Now, um, what's interesting is you're not throwing the ball straight up. You're not hitting the ball straight up in the air. So. The 96 T is actually the force pushing it up and out. You, this does not talk about at all, this does not tell you and will not tell you at all, and you will never be able to find out how far the ball, where the ball landed. Because the x-axis is not horizontal distance, it's time. This is only measuring how high the ball is. It's one-dimensional, folks. It's, it's two-dimensional because it's with respect to time. The third dimension and the fourth dimension. But they are not talking about any horizontal traveling of the ball, if you notice. You should look at that. That's actually very important. You cannot, the roots of this are the times where the ball is on the ground. Okay? If you were to find the roots of this, it would not be telling you how far the ball traveled. I want everybody to think about that. Don't just... It would be telling you the moments of time when it hits the ground. Right. This is, this, in a plane, you only get two dimensions at a time. So Wait a minute. This is talking about time and height of the ball after a certain amount of time. So the 96 right there is the initial velocity in the upward direction only. Remember that that's only part of the component vectors, right, that are working on the ball. So this is not the full picture of what's happening. The ball is going 96 feet per second in an upward direction, but it's also traveling in a horizontal x direction as well 
and that's not being included here. This doesn't care about that. Okay, this is just tracking its height only. So I hope you understand that. A lot of people see this parabola and they think, oh, that is the ball. The ball is being hit, it goes up and comes down. That's not what that's, this is only mapping what the height is at a given time during, during the hit. Only this parabola would existed, the ball would move straight up and straight down. Right, according to this, this is just showing the ball is if you just saw the ball going straight up and straight down, exactly. Also, the left root is at negative time. It is, because if the ball starts at a certain height, then the only way to get to that mathematically is to go back in time to see the trajectory, following that trajectory to where it would have hit the ground if it was going the opposite direction. Okay. All right, that was a great problem. Okay. We are definitely going to practice this. So let's all just do number 13. I'm going to write it on the board. You don't need to go ahead because we're just going to talk about one at a time. This is probably my, my number one thing I want you to come out of this lesson with is knowing how to do these problems. So we're definitely going to do all of these. Oh, look, at they don't even challenge you by having a coefficient to take out. That was what was more difficult. So 16 is going to do that for us. So 16 will be the more challenging one. But let's do 13 first. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the share. This is the one you're doing. Properties of equality could work. Yeah, but then you would be, you could, right? You could put everything over to the left, right? And then later bring it over to the right. Yes, that's what I meant. You could move over the one, which would make it a perfect square, wouldn't it? Or, or would it have to be positive in order to be a well, let's do, let's do Cern's method. Let's, let's, let's bring the 17 over here to get it out of that, that, that side completely. No, not the 17. Just subtract one. That's oh, all we yeah. need. We just need to subtract one. You can do that. That's a shortcut. Yes. I don't want to confuse all the students or some of the students. Okay, so I could move the 17 over here to get it out of the way, or you can leave it over here. That's the way we've been doing it. But I, I wanna let you guys learn this new method of manipulation. So I, I want you to practice doing it this way. Okay, complete the square. Half of- Plus 16. All right, don't shout things out. Okay, half of eight is four, and then you square the four and get 16. So add 16 and subtract 16. Now, if you look at this, okay, you have y is equal to x minus half of the middle term, quantity squared, and then negative 16 plus 17 is 1. Okay. So it says write it in vertex form, then identify the vertex. So the vertex is at, don't call it negative four. It's not negative four. Daniel, you got that? It's four. Yeah, because the equation is X minus. Yes, it's X minus H plus K. So that is the K, it's one. All right, and if that was the last example, it would have been four seconds and one foot off the ground. Oh, uh, four seconds. Well, we don't know that. We don't know what the axes are here. No, I'm saying if I said if it was the last problem that we did, that's what it would mean. Oh, yeah. That's a pretty odd baseball hit going, coming down and then shooting back up into the sky. And hovering at one foot or getting to one foot after four seconds. What was going on before that? It would start off above one foot, so we would just be shooting straight down. Maybe it's one of those where you have the ping pong ball over the air current, and it just slowly is starting to rise. Maybe. And then you let go of the current, and then it starts to drop. Okay. You said it was a baseball hit. So imagine the pitcher pitching all the way up to the batter, hitting it down, and it bounces off at one foot. Go ahead and practice this next one, please.
but you're rewriting it in vertex form. Then you're, you're um, identifying the vertex. Okay, this is a really weird baseball hit. Thank you. Okay, I bump out my plus three. Six gets cut in half, and then I square it. Plus nine, minus nine. And then minus six. This is what I'm going to, now this is a perfect square x plus half of the middle term minus six negative three and negative six so the vertex is negative three negative six yep so in three seconds it shoots no, down three, to the ground three seconds ago it was at its maximum height of negative six. Oh yeah so three seconds before the batter hit hit it it was embedded six feet under who knows? It might be underwater. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it was launched up. Still six feet under. Maybe it's conscious. We don't know. Huh. It's underwater. It's still Someone six feet might under. have tried to bury it alive. How do you know if the third Maybe term in the binomial is, is negative or positive? It was murder. Extraterrestrial right. life. All right, hold on, everybody. How do I know what? How do you know if the third term in the trinomial is positive or negative? You're squaring it, right? It's half. It's always positive. It's half of this squared. So when you square something, what does it have to be? Always. Okay. That yeah. makes it easy. No, it, it can be negative oh, if it's imaginary. Plus. Well, if you have a, if it's imaginary, it could, right? Okay. But that wouldn't fit with the middle term. No. Any questions about this? I want to get back to imaginary numbers. Real numbers are boring. I know you liked it, right? Is you. I mean, the next time you'll see it is on the review and then the test and then... You know, I can barely comprehend that stuff. Okay, slow down. Mm -hmm. Well, as long as you can comprehend it, barely. I'll take barely. I can't comprehend it's different. I better see you in office hours. That's something that I I notice <laughs> students that are having st are struggling over this quarantine. You're not coming into office hours and doing anything about it. I need you to do that. Okay, so I know I'm speaking to a lot of you out there. You need to do that something about it. You can't just not. You can't quietly sit there and struggling and not doing anything about it. Okay, it's open note. It's open. You can look at the lessons while you're taking the test. Okay, um, office hours. There's not. I mean, you have plenty of resources. There's Khan Academy, YouTube. There's all sorts of ways to see it again. Khan Academy is awesome. Okay, I can break it well. down. Anyway, no more questions about this. I'm going to give you the next problem to practice. It's nine o'clock. Thank you. Don't tell me the time, please. Han Solo, never tell me the time. No, never tell me the odds. Okay, go ahead. Take take a twenty seconds, thirty seconds here. Yeah, but it is like Han Solo. Don't tell me. Never tell me the odds. Never tell me the time. I that's I wear a watch for that purpose. Okay. Can't have a minus there, right? Bump that out. I could see a student saying, oh, there's already a minus four. Don't put another, no. If you put, that was already there. If you add anything new, you must account. Just remember that, put that in your notes. Whatever you add to the equation, you have to account for it either with the properties of equality, with the identity properties. Oh, well, actually this is the identity property. What am I actually adding to the right hand side? What am I netting? Uh, Zero, I'm adding nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you balance, you account for things, that, it makes it simple. You either account for things using properties of equality or you account for things using identity property. You account for changing a fraction. One half you change into two fourths by multiplying by two over two. That's an identity. You're changing the way it looks, but not the value. Well, we're doing that with the additive identity. We're adding zero, okay? 
Adding for, subtracting for is adding nothing. So you're either manipulating by using identity, the identity property, or you're adding something or subtracting something on both sides, which is the properties of equality. That's it. And doing, doing something on both sides, you can bring back over to that side. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we go. X minus two. This is gonna be yes, X minus half of that. And then that's this part, and that's minus eight. So your vertex is at two, negative eight, not negative two. At two seconds is six, eight, eight feet under. What kind of batter is hitting that hard of a bunt? It's not What's a bunt? A bunt? That's a submarine. A bunt is when you don't submarine actually start to, to, Submarine, to submarine starts to rise towards the surface. Two seconds, it reaches its maximum point and starts to go back down deeper. There you What's go. What's a bunt? A bunt is Bro. when you don't. A bunt is when you don't swing the bat. You just hold the bat out and let the ball hit it. You swing it a little you're bit. You're hoping that a. Like, like you're hoping that a small. You hit. hold the bat in both hands, like one end at each hand, and kind of like push it toward the ball. Oh, I meant it's, it's like a. It's like a tiny up. hit, just to try and. Yeah, yeah, yeah in the picture, and everyone's like in the outfield. Thinking you do you're that so the people will try to run into the ball. Yeah, you. you you hit a bunt to run somebody. Who's trying to, to run home? Yeah, like, Wait, when, what? If somebody's, somebody's running, if somebody's on third, when they're like, when you they're want like a bunt. Oh. Sign so doesn't know baseball terms. All right, here's Sound. more challenges. Cricket is better. Okay, Rav. Uh, of course it is. Okay, folks. Cricket makes go. less sense. Moving on. No more. Okay, let's say in the baseball, baseball example. Makes much less excuse, sense. Me. excuse me. Excuse me. I said no more. Okay, look here. For this one, we're going to go back to the baseball example. Now go ahead and see if you can do the more challenging one. Now they gave you 16 and 80. They gave, they gave you nice numbers. If they're not as nice, the problem gets messier, but the idea is the same. I hate not nice numbers. Factor out of two. I know you don't. I know you do not like nice numbers or unnice numbers, mean numbers. Yes, unnice. Factor out of two. If you don't know how to start, start two. No, I wouldn't do that. That's really the cri most critical step right there. That's the one where you have to kind of bend your mind the most. Mind bender. Oh, here's a not nice number, David. But it's not terrible. It's just it is terrible. You can use it oh. as decimal, it seems nice. Well, half of five is 2.5. 2.5 squared is 6.25. Now I cannot subtract 6.25 here because that of that. Because this is multiplied by a negative. That's why I didn't factor out the 16. That looks so nice. Six, 16 times 6.25 is 100. It's 100? Thank you for that. So why am I adding and not subtracting 100? Because that's negative 100. Oh, it's 100. Oh. That's negative 100 if I multiply these. Which means I have to account for it with a positive 100 out here. Okay, now I have my A is negative 16. This now gets to factor. It factors into T minus half of that is 2.5 squared plus 102. Hey, yeah. Okay. So- How'd you factor that one, Mr. Ostal? Could you just say? Uh... It's half of the B term. That's what this is. Ah, oh, I see. 
because negative 2.5 plus negative 2.5 gives you negative 5. Negative 2.5 times negative 2.5 gives you positive 6.25. Okay? All right, so this means that 2.5 seconds after the hit, ball reaches max height of 102 feet. Questions about that? Now, when you get to your Algebra 2 class in, in a couple months from now, we can do transformations, you know, using vertex form. And what you might want to do is you might want to put it in Desmos and, you know, check out your slider. Why don't we do that now? So, See, I think, yeah, that was the end of the lesson. Okay, so everybody right now, I'm just gonna tell you before I do the Desmos, um, you're gonna do the homework four, seven, and you're gonna do every fourth problem. Yay. So people that are not, and I gotta write it down. People that are not attending the Zoom lesson might do all the evens. Uh -huh. So maybe it's a reward for coming to the Zoom meeting. Maybe you shouldn't tell the other students, I don't know or they'll let them find out on their own. Homework, 4.7. I, I think there are very few people who aren't coming to the Zoom meetings anymore, at least from our class. Yeah, but look at the participants. I have 99. We, we, yeah, we should have 100 kids here if everybody can. Yeah, it's just short of that. Okay, here you go. So this is what you're doing. Every fourth problem, that will cut it way down. Now, this does not mean you have to do every fourth problem. I recommend that you still do all the evens. But to get credit, you just need to do every fourth problem. All right. So, so I, you give us extra credit for I know doing most all the of evens? you no, I know most of you are gonna take this option. But I'll be really proud of you secretly. That's your reward. For those, okay, guys. For those that did every every even, that means that you really want to practice and know how to do the material. Well, you have no okay, way of knowing got it. if those people are the people that didn't come to the lesson or the people that are actually trying. It doesn't matter if I know that. It only matters to you if you know it. It's for you. It's not for me, silly. It's your own morality. There's 57 students here. Silly rabbit tricks are for kids. Yeah, but don't use yellow. You're not going to be able to see it. Yeah, I take the green. Yeah, David, we should have Okay. If everybody came. Now I'm going to show you. Yeah, I mean, our participants, I'm, I'm, you know, we have, what, 57 60. students. Almost I'm the 58th. So we're missing a lot of students, aren't we? There are 58 before. We're missing about 40 students. That's a lot of people not attending the lesson. When I look, at, when I look at YouTube, it's not the other 40 students. I don't get 40 views. I have, like, 6 to 10 views. Sometimes I have now no add people. that. And now, if you add that, that means about six people see the lessons. If you have 60 participants and Yeah, what are they going to do? Views. What do I expect to see? I think what a lot of them are people who are leaving. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure that some of the people even like that are during the Zoom sometimes re-watch the lesson. Yeah, some of the views are people that are like reviewing for tests. Right, exactly, exactly. So, so you have a huge number of students not even attending these lessons. How are they going to take this test? They're just going to look at the review? I mean, I, I, or they're just going to say, oh, I, I slept in or I wasn't able to attend or um, sorry, I missed the test. Knowing that their, their score can't go down, you know, think of the, um, the ethics involved. Think of what that's doing to your character for your, the rest these of your life. These students don't have ethics. Do you understand? You, and they, no, they but what I'm want... saying, during these formative years, I'm trying to give you some wisdom. You can't ever go back to these. It kind of shapes who you are, your character, you know. It's important for your own self, not for me. It's important for yourself to do it the right way, even though that's the harder way. Okay, let's go to, I'm going to go to Desmos a little bit to play around a little bit before we go. I really shouldn't. We really should make sure we get this test in because people are depending on this test for their grade. Uh, you want to see like the Desmos I won't spend I a long time in this, but look. 
we're going to do just a slider activity here real quick. Okay, so X minus H, and we're going to want to do ship six squared. Are you going to share your screen? Yes, once I get it up. Yeah. Uh, okay. Mr. Rosenthal, I have a question about the textbook return. Okay. Uh, for the classes that depend on the textbook, like biology, are we still going to have tests for those classes if we don't have the textbook? Uh, yes, we're going to still have tests for biology. You should have known that from the class yesterday. Wait, we don't no say, wait, wait. We don't say oh. you should have. Don't attack Sorry. people Not nice. like there's that. No reason. Sorry. Yeah. There's an, but there's no outlines once, once Wednesday hits. We're still going to have tests, and she's going to post the study guide. Okay, everybody, let's Who go back to what I'm doing here. No outlines? Yeah, the outlines were terrible. Oh, God. All right, all right, what folks. Can we, well, I'll say, you can definitely talk about this in office hours. Right now, let's okay. let's go ahead and do this. How do I'll I get that to go? How do I get to go th that to go back to the parent function, which is going through the origin at the minimum? Um, put h and k at zero. Yeah. That's right. H and k at zero. Exactly. So I'm going to slide it. There. Look at what h zero does. What did it do? Puts it on the y-axis. Is it is it making the parabola? narrower or stretching it no squeezing no. it in any way just and, moves it and look at the k yeah. is one okay notice that in the equation up here you guys can see my mouse right yeah see daniel yeah. That's minus h not plus h yeah and look h is not a negative unless i make it a negative okay if i make it negative then it's minus a negative and you're going to see plus in here but make, making h negative is going to do what it's going to bump it left right and then up in up in here it would say plus because it's minus a negative as i make h positive it bumps it to the right okay so this vertex form is really good for transformation i can move the parabola up and down without changing its shape so it's like congruency transformations remember that what about a rigid a motion just now, if I slide A, if I slide A, play on a. that is no longer, a, not, it's not even a similarity transformation. It changes the whole look of the parabola. Okay. Hit play on A. Okay. Press that triangle button. Hit play, it's really cool. Oh, hit play? Okay. It's flying it's parabola. I like the play, but you can like make it fast though, and then it's like flapping its wings. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Pause. Then you can hit play on H and K and then stuff happens. Okay, now. Oh, then it flies away. What if I put a slider here, like a B here? What does it do? Well, first, you'd have to set A back to one because you can't see the parabola. A is oh, yeah. zero. <laughs> I don't know why it went to zero. You set it at zero. What is that doing? It's not making it. Uh, it's the same thing, but not negative. It's not flipping it around. It's keeping it on top. So those are when you're going to start talking next season, uh, in a couple months. Next season. That, you're going to be talking about horizontal and vertical stretches and squeezes. Oh, uh, yeah. OK. And that will have to do with the A and the B, whether it's inside or outside. OK. So, but you, you, you can definitely practice that by coming into Desmos, making this, this vertex form of the equation and seeing what happens. Now, what would be interesting is to put this in standard form and see if you can get the same things to happen with sliders. But anyway, we're done with that right now. Okay. No. Sorry. New page. No one likes watching flying parabolas better than doing actual math. I'm going to open up. I don't. I am gonna get a, I'm going to get it started on 4.8 just because of time. We have 13 minutes. We cannot allow them to go to waste. Yeah, it's enough to where we should start. What What is 4.8 anyway? You're going to see in just a moment. Wait a minute. Where is my... Hold on. Sorry, folks. There we go. Got the problem now. Now I'm going to see it. All right. Take a look at that problem. 
and maybe we'll end with this problem. I don't know how long it's going to take. Start reading the problem. I think four eights on the discriminant. I mean, it's not, I don't know how much new stuff is left. It seems like we've beaten parabolas, you know, to the ground. We were kicking, uh, being the dead horse. Yeah. Well, of course, there's a lot of stuff after this, like synthetic division and polynomials and step functions. Yeah, but we're not getting to, we're not gonna have time to get to all that. Maybe we can get, do some synthetic division. But it, that's going to be after we take our test. Okay, in your pottery class, you're given a lump of clay. Ew, pottery. My mom used to call me a lump of clay. No, just kidding. In your pottery class, you are given a lump of clay with a volume of 200 cubic centimeters and are asked to make a cylindrical pencil holder. The pencil holder should be nine centimeters high and have an inner radius of three centimeters. What thickness X? should your pencil holder have if you want to use all of the clay you have to go back to our last geometry chapter uh not the last one it was chapter 10 and it was chapter 11 volume volume of a of a two base object is all area of the base times the height the area of the base is a circle so you're going to have to use pi r squared times the height is the volume and you know what that's supposed to equal. Pottery. I think I got a hold of this. Oh. Wait, if you look at the pottery that she's I don't doing. need to subtract, I don't need to subtract the inner cylinder. Shouldn't whatever you're doing you do. be equal to 200? The, the, you have to subtract the inner cylinder in order to get the f volume, which should be equal to 200. You don't know the volume of the big, of the overall cylinder. You just know the volume of the of the overall cylinder minus the inner cylinder. Can you set the um, the volume of the overall cylinder equal oh, to two hundred since it's, it has to be equal to two hundred? Because oh, you're said. right. I don't have the volume of the overall. I only have the volume of what's left over. You're right. So you're right. I do need the volume of the inner cylinder. Wait, can't you just make it equal to two hundred? I can. Are you looking at my screen? Yeah. Yeah, I will do that, but I want to, ex yeah, I guess I could do that. Well, well, the volume of the total cylinder is going to be 200, right? Yeah, that's 200. You're right. So then you could just do X plus three. Well, as I'm going to leave this. I'm going to leave this the way it was. Volume of inner cylinder is going to be pi R squared times its height is only nine. The other one's height is X plus nine. The other radius is x plus three. So you guys want to look at my screen. And then I need to subtract. Okay. Can you stop sharing the screen? So you're missing something for your inner cylinder. That's what I have. I have my bigger cylinder is pi. The radius is three plus the extra squared. Actually, um, the volume of the big cylinder, if you look at the problem, 
the overall height is nine, not plus X. The overall. Oh, it's minus X. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this one is not, I was going to say, we're going to get a Q. No, it's not we're minus gonna, six. Mr. It. Rosenthal, couldn't you just calculate this by having it, having the entire cylinder be nine pi times X plus three squared? This one's nine minus fine. X. Hold on, Surin. This one is nine minus X. Thank you, Zig. Go ahead, Surin. Mr. Rosenthal, couldn't you just calculate this by setting pi, pi r squared h, where the radius is x plus 3, equal to 200, because the total cylinder, empty space and all, is going to be 200. No, we only need plus to find it's it. not. No, no. The total the space minus the empty wait, space wait, wait, is 200. Surin, there will be no clay in the middle of this pencil holder. I know, but won't the volume of the total cylinder still be... Won't it, won't it still be 200? Yes, but it has empty space where there is no clay, and you only have 200 clay. You do not count that empty space as part of the volume. Oh, you okay. need to get rid of it. Hmm. So I think this is now good. Uh, Zig was right. I looked at it wrong. It wasn't 9 plus x. It was actually 9 was the whole thing. So there's 9 as the height of the big one. And then you subtract off that x to get the height of the smaller one. Because the, the thickness extends everywhere. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the first one minus the second one. The big one, volume, minus the inner volume gives me the... I, the pi is being annoying. Sorry. Uh, Mr. Ozadok, could you share a screen? Getting in the way. Wait, you want me to share a screen? You don't want me to do the problem yeah, for you? Uh, j j just for a second, Mr. Ozadok. Go ahead. Why are they all smiling? Well, Aubrey's <laughs> that, not that fun. That's what people do when they're they have balance in their life. I guess this is like a math textbook picture, generic math textbook picture. Everyone's smiling. I happy, think happy, that's fun. satisfactory, Mr. Rosenthal. Oh, that's a cynical view. Okay. All right. So let's see what happens here. I have nine pi. It's probably a co uh, oh. accurate though. So I have nine, okay, so I have to do nine pi. Wait, Mr. Why is it x plus three? Have we done this problem before? I just got to you. No, because I am doing the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. The radius from here to here is three. This is x. So the radius of the whole cylinder is x plus three. Okay, but, okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm actually going to square this. x squared plus 6x plus 9. Okay. Now I'm going to multiply 9 pi to each one. 9 pi x squared plus 54 pi x plus 81 pi. There's my first one. Minus this next part, I'll keep in black. I'm color coding so you guys can follow where I got it from. I got green from green. And this is inconsistent, so I should make this green again. Make the problem green again. Please no. Okay, here we go. Now, this is 9 pi. So I'm actually going to switch this around and make this negative x plus 9 before I distribute. So I have 9 pi times negative x is negative 9 pi. Be careful here. Because you already have, you just have to subtract this, okay? So that's negative, so 9 pi, or yeah, 9 pi. It's a negative 9 pi, though, so because you're subtracting it. So negative 9 pi, it's going to end up being positive later. And then this Wait. Will, positive 81 pi. Uh, one moment. Forgot Mr. the Rose, x no. after the negative Aren't you doing, pi. Uh, Mr. Rose, uh, one moment. If if the area of the first, uh, if the area of the larger, so if the volume of the larger cylinder is pi times x plus three, uh, nine pi times x plus three squared, and the volume of the smaller one is nine pi times nine minus x, uh, wouldn't you be doing nine pi it's times It's 81 pi x minus x. nine pi x. It's 81 no, pi. It, no, well, uh, the area of the second one, it would be nine pi times nine minus x, which, which works out to that. But wouldn't you subtract the nine pi? Wouldn't it be minus nine pi times nine minus x because you're subtracting the original area? I'm subtracting, but this is a minus x to begin with. 
Mm, but so you distributed it for uh, you 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 did distribution first, then you subtracted it. Yeah, when you distribute, there's a negative x right there. You see my finger, right? Yes. But that all oh, that's part of what this is here. Okay, and you're subtracting this whole thing from the green. Mm -hmm. You're subtracting a negative. It's going to be subtracting a negative. Mm -hmm. Now. Let's do it. Nothing goes with the nine pi x squared. Okay, I'm done with that. 54 pi x plus nine pi x is 63 pi x. This is gonna work out nicely. Okay, and then 81 pi minus 81 pi is gone. Very lovely. Now we know what we're looking at in red is the result volume of, sub, of boring out this volume. We subtracted out this volume from the green volume, the bigger one. And we now know that's the clay that we need, that's the 200 that we're gonna need. Okay, now there's nothing here. What I could do is I could divide out nine pi right now. Right? If I divide both sides by 9 pi, I get that. Okay. And then um, I think they want us to complete the square to do this. Oh, wait a minute. What? Oh, they want us to solve for x. Yes. So we could get this all on one side. Completing the square is not necessarily what we want to do, right? To find x. It shows the, is it, was it, was the, the term? The square gets us vertex form. The vertex term was, form, we don't, the vertex is not the point of interest that we're looking for. We want oh, to Mr. solve x, yeah. Mr. Ostel, sorry to interrupt, but the term was 63 pi x, right? Mm -hmm. So when you divided it by, oh wait, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get them to I'm gonna say zero is equal to x squared plus seven x minus two hundred over nine pi. And I'm everybody can go to their calculator. Formula. Yeah, quadratic formula. Negative seven plus or minus the square root of forty nine. That's b squared minus four times one times negative two hundred over nine pi. All over two. And Ooh, irrational numbers. This is going to be positive, okay? But this is very doable. Okay, so it's going to be uh, 800. It's positive, right? Plus, plus. So you're going to add it to 49. So I'm going to do 200 times 4 is 800 divided by 9, divided by my pi button. Let's divide by the button. Divide by the button, I know. Plus 49. That's what's called my discriminant. Then I take the square root of that, and I get this. Now, x cannot be negative, and I'm already starting here with a negative 7. You cannot have this minus. Let's get rid of the minus. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to then, now that I have 8.7917 and so on and so forth, I'm going to add negative 7 to that or subtract 7 to get that, and then divide by two. And that's a nice conclusion to our day of math. Well, thank you, teacher. Uh. Yeah, I get point, about 0. 0.9, and this was in centimeters, 0. 0.9 centimeters of thickness is my pencil, is the thickness of my pencil, whatever you call this, pencil. pencil holder. Can you imagine a pottery student calculating that? and shaping the clay exactly that thick. And smiling too. I mean, all you have to do is like use all the clay and make a thing. Yeah. It doesn't have to be those but it might be, But it might, might not be uniform thickness. You it's are dismissed. We are in office hours. Yeah. So, no, I don't understand who distributed it. Here, in green or black? In black to everything else. Okay. Three squared is nine, right? Yes, yeah, so you get nine pi. Okay, here I switch these around, negative x plus 9. Okay. 9 pi times negative x is negative 9 pi x. Mm -hmm. 9 pi times 9 is positive 81 pi. Done. And what about everything else? 
the green, I just did nine pi times. And what I did here is I had, here's my nine pi here. Oh, and then you. I squared this to get this, and then I distributed to each of these to get the green. Oh. The green is the volume of the, of the big volume of the big cylinder. Mm -hmm. Black here was the volume of the small cylinder, and I subtracted them. When I subtracted them, I got this. And once I got this, I said, oh, that's the leftover volume. That's the clay I'm using. It has to equal 200 cubic centimeters. So then I solved it from there. Mm -hmm. So does the negative distribute to the 9 pi x, so does it become plus 9 pi x minus 81 pi? Over here? Mm -hmm. Because I'm subtracting it, then it subtracts the negative, which is adding. So plus and, Yeah, and then this is subtracting positive 81 pi, so it's subtracting 81 pi. That's why you don't see 81 pi anymore. 81 pi minus 81 pi is zero. Oh, and 54 plus 9 is 64. That's it. You got it. Then I subtracted, well, then I divided by nine pi. Mm -hmm. Then I used the quadratic formula. Okay. I am in office hour, so if you guys want to discuss anything, if I have students that are struggling with any of the key material that we're going to be testing on, this is the time to ask about it. Mr. Rosenthal, can you do this problem from this, from this homework? Any of the homework that we've been doing from Algebra 2, any of the lessons, any of the examples, can you do this problem, Mr. Rosenthal? Yes. Here's the problem. Here's how you do it. And then I'll break it down for you. Students have been asking me more and more, what can I do to raise my grade? They're looking for some easy way in, in a lot of cases, not all cases. But they're looking for an extra credit project or no, you have to learn what we're, what I'm telling you I want you to learn. Okay, I want you to learn this stuff. So the only way to get the grade is to learn it. That's what a grade is. It's a reflection of how much of what we're doing, not some other thing. I had a Spanish teacher in high school who gave extra credit if you brought an umbrella on a rainy day or you brought a what? box of tissues. I'm like, that's great. These That's kids get extra credit for things that aren't related to what they know in Spanish. So I, I guess that trauma affected the way that I have my own policy. Wait, how is that tr how is that traumatizing for you? It just was. It wasn't fair. It's traumatizing to me. If you brought an umbrella, that you would be covered, right? I didn't want to bring an umbrella. <laughs> you thought you should be treated fairly based on how well you knew the subject instead of whether you did an action or not, right? Absolutely. I would agree in that case. It's, 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 if you think about it, it's ludicrous. Ludicrous speed, go! Are there, are there any questions? Uh, nope. Okay, so remember, Monday we're not meeting. And then June 3rd and 4th, I am unavailable because I'm at the school site. Wait, is June, is locker pickup next week or next, next week? June 3rd, so let's see, today's the 21st. It's not next week. Next, next week, today, next Thursday so is two. the 28th. Oh, so wait, so we got. Hello? Hello? You were saying? So in three weeks. Two weeks. So hopefully we'll have our test next week. No. We'll be clear before we even get to, to June. Hopefully we'll be done with this chapter and tested before, but maybe not because we have to review. So maybe we'll be testing on Monday or Tuesday of the following week. Who knows? But we're getting close because it's 4, 8, 4, 9, 4, 10, and then we're going to review and test. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rosenthal. Have a good day. See you tomorrow. You betcha. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rosenthal. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Have a good day. Mr. Rosenthal, wait. Let me show you my screen. I... Uh, let me do it. Let me...
let me give you that option. Okay, go ahead. Oh, wow. You did all combinations? That's pretty cool. That's super cool. You're doing transformations with points. Look, it's only, it's, it's, it's following a vector path that's, it's going back and forth, quadrant one to quadrant three. Why is there pause in the middle? Is it because there's actually a lag or is it because it's doing something in the middle there? Anyway, okay, thank you. Any questions? All right, David, you want to unshare that? Anybody else have any questions? No? This is your chance. No, Andrew, Boaz, David, Russell, Ryan. Any All questions? Right. I'm going to end the bye, meeting. Mr. Rosenthal. All right, bye, David. Okay. Bye, guys. See you tomorrow.